Oh my, that guy needs singing lessons. My goodness gracious, guys. Y'all can take the earplugs off now. Hi, this is Mark Hollander. Thank you again, everybody, for joining us. Uh, another edition of Hoodwinked into the Age of Insanity. And uh, that was insane singing. We're not going on tour, so thank God for that. But we um, just want to pay homage to all the moms out there in the world. The ones, that, I'm talking about the good moms and uh, and you know, I've been blessed with knowing lots of my friends and mostly my family, my daughters and my kids, you know, it's just paying homage. Uh, I paid homage to my mom today, uh, my late mom, you know, a heavenly mom, you know, but just wanted to wish all you moms out there a happy Mother's Day. And every single day is a mom's day. It's, it's really it takes a special breed that just to be nurturing and, you know, God made you that way for a purpose and a reason. And of course, you're a lot prettier than men are too. But anyway, um, today we have a very, very special guest. He's actually been on Ferret Radio Live a couple of times. I didn't have the uh, privilege to interview him. At the time, I believe Rick Lotech interviewed this man twice. I met him only one time in my life in, uh, I think, November of 2018 at the, uh, Denver, Colorado, uh, it was a Flat Earth International Conference. I believe that's what it was, FEIC convention. And uh, we, I went on behalf of Ferret Radio Live. In fact, Shelly Lewis came from California to meet up with me. And uh, so we, we had the privilege to meet this gentleman. In fact, uh, it was under circumstances that uh, we'll get into in a minute. But uh, he is uh, one of the guys that that is a pioneer you know, the flat earth movement and uh, he's been controversial, but you know, some, in some circles, people think I'm very controversial myself. And, uh, but he's uh, the author of one of the greatest, most viewed videos in the world called flat earth clues. And, uh, but we're, we're going to talk to him about uh, our brief meeting in Denver, but ladies and gentlemen, I want to introduce you one of the pioneers of flat earth all the way back from 2015 his name is mark Sargent. mark are you in the house <laughs> i am here and you know as you were doing that intro i it all of a sudden dawned on me it's like you're the only person that interviewed me before i left the conference in denver you were you were the only interview yes. i did and now yeah no i remember this it was it was burned into my head because i did not sleep that night before i, yeah. I spoke with you that morning Wow, Mark, you know, it's interestingly enough that I was um, well, I was told that at the convention, but I could never verify it because, you know, you and I and everybody else that's in the truth movement, yeah. especially the knowledge that we've acquired since that time in 2018, yeah. is uh, it's it someone that told me that, Mark, you know what, you and Ferret Radio were the only ones that were able to interview Mark Sargent. And, uh, and you know, I, that was very gracious of you uh, for, for giving me that interview because I knew, Mark, that you were pissed off. I mean, you I was were very I upset. Give me from <laughs> Carson, but you were upset. And, and, and guys, uh, I'm going to let Mark expound on it because he sure. is more, you no, know, he was on the inside, but uh, they had a secret guest. And this was yeah. a Robbie Davidson when he owned the FBI, at least he was the event coordinator yeah. for the FEIC. And he kind of kept a secret guest from you guys. And there's yeah. no other than Logan Paul. Yeah. And uh, and then when the name was revealed, yeah, you were really became unreal. And in fact, <laughs> I tried to help calm you down. Take us back to 2018. Tell okay. us the into that. Okay, so what had happened was, is that Robbie Davidson, who ran the conference in 20, well, I mean, he ran all the conferences uh, that we had done so far uh, before the pandemic thing happened. So what had happened was Logan Paul, uh, part of the Paul brothers, he and Jake Paul, they are professional trolls. They will do anything for clicks and hits. And they realized, or at least Logan in this case, realized that Flat Earth was a big thing and it was not going anywhere. And so he contacted Robbie and said, look, I, I want to buy, I want to show up at the conference. I want to shoot some footage here and there. And I don't want you to tell anyone that I'm coming. And he bought a bunch of VIP tickets, you know, a bunch of, a, you know, he and his whole crew showed up for this thing. And he goes, but I want you to keep it an absolute secret. No one can know that I'm coming. And we don't know if there were any side deals that Rob had going on, 
But what, and Rob, I will say this, he was absolutely true to his word in that he did not tell anyone anything. You would not, would not give it up. And we were guessing, we were guessing. And of course he was laying the hype machine because he was using that to sell tickets. It's like, we have a special celebrity guest, special celebrity guest. And everyone, you know, he was letting it feed upon itself. So by the time we had gotten to Denver, I mean, we, we thought it was Will Smith. We thought it was Jack Black. We thought it because he said they were a, an actor and a singer. Right. And it's like, okay. And you know, there's very few along those lines that, that can right. be considered that. So what he didn't realize was that Logan Paul's demographics skew very, very young, usually junior high kids and occasionally some high school. And he, he and his brother have done some horrible, horrible things uh, over the years. And there was this one incident that I thought would have put him on the, the internet blacklist forever. And I think it really did hurt him, which was, uh, you know, Japan has this forest, which is known for suicides. And he went over there and did a prank video in the forest right. itself and it was just awful and i was like what you know he's one of the worst people ever and i i used to do internet research for a living and i knew about this and but the thing was no because of our demographics in, in the in the fe community most people are over the age of 35 nobody knew who he was so what happened was he showed up nobody knew he was there and then finally he was supposed to show up at this cocktail hour the night before the the first speaking you know i was i, I was there a couple of days before you know, did all the, the the PR stuff I could. And then he didn't show up at the at the mixer. It didn't show up. So Robbie just said, oh, it's it's Logan Paul. And I remember David Weiss came up to me during that mixer. He goes, you know, and remember an hour before he had told me, I think it's, you know, David Weiss said, I think it's Jack Black. <laughs> Going, right. okay, I'll take him. Sure, why not? You know, and then he comes up, he goes, it's Logan Paul. And I stared at him in just utter disbelief. I was in complete denial. It's like, it can't be Logan Paul. It's like, why not? He goes, because I go, because Logan Paul's a troll. I go, he's here to troll us. I go, there's no way you would ever let, I mean, not only that, but they were letting, they were going to give him stage time. They were going to let him actually, you know, be on, be on stage. Give him, give this guy a microphone. Oh my God, it's horrible. And he's, I mean, plus he's not articulate in any way, shape or form. So anyway, I wrestled with it that night and I could not prove when I, I sat down with a bunch of the speakers at dinner that night. And I said, okay, look, you guys can't let this guy be here. I go, you, you, you know, but no, I was getting no response from them whatsoever because nobody knew who he was. I was going, oh God, you're killing me. So I, I basically said, I made up my mind. I did not sleep that night and I made up my mind. And I said, if I get confirmation that it is actually him, I am walking. I am just walking out. I'm not going to do my set. I'm not going to, I'm not going to talk to him. I'm not going to do the flatties with Patricia. And I'm I'm just gonna head straight now, to the now Mark, uh, who did you who did you tell this to? I mean, who did you speak? Nobody. Was, obviously, it was one of your close confidants. Who did oh you no, no, me? I didn't tell anybody that I was leaving. Nobody. Right. I told you nobody that I was leaving that because, because, because they wrong. would have, because they would have tried to stop me, and that's one of the reasons Patricia was so upset. I got you. She thought it's like, well, you at least confided in me, and it's like, no, because if I would have confided, in you, you would have drugged David and Jaron and Bob and all these guys, and the next thing you know, it would have been an intervention in my hotel room, and I didn't want that. Right. So. I walked down that morning and I bumped into Cammy Nodell, Bob's wife, and she was she was running uh, part of the registration stuff. And I go, do you, I go, has Logan Paul come in? Has the celebrity guy come in yet? And she goes, she goes, yeah, it's some guy named Logan Paul. She goes, I've never heard of him. And I go, you saw this guy? And, and she goes, yes. And I go, fine. And I turned right back around. And as I'm, I'm not kidding you, man, I was heading straight to my hotel room to pick up my bags and go to the airport. And I ran into you <laughs> and, and, and you're like, give us a few words. I was like, yeah, you know what? Fine. Cause I didn't know what flight I was going to be on anyway. I mean, I was going to the airport, you know, which you never do. It's like, Hey, can I change my flight and come back two two, three days early? And well, well you uh, know, Mark, you're actually pretty persuasive because after I spoke to you, yeah. you know, there was a short period of time, you know, uh, had I not been around people that I was obligated and responsible for, yeah. I probably would have left myself because you're pretty persuasive to me. And well, I can tell that you're upset. And, you know, I was actually very appreciative in that you actually gave me a few minutes because I could see that you wanted to get the hell out of there. Oh, I mean, I was, I was tired. I was fatigued. But more than that, I was pissed off because I knew that, that the conference was getting punked. 
and right. they they hadn't run into this, something like this yet. And I didn't know if Robbie was a part of it. I mean, Robbie was a part of it, but I don't think he knew. See, all he saw was the millions of subs that Logan had. And it's right. like, well, it's worth it. It's worth it for the exposure. And I'm going to, you know, he's going to make us look bad. Now, what was rough was after I left, I took hell for three months until, because it took Logan that long, because he's, he's not fast and his team is not fast at getting something out there, to release his thing. And when he released it, it was a complete troll job. It was a complete hit piece where they made Robbie just look horrible because Robbie oh, volunteered yeah. for everything. That's right. And, and then... Then I was validated because, in fact, Logan even mentioned, you know, it, it, it was like, oh, yeah, we got everybody. Well, except that Mark Sargent guy. And I was like, yeah, because I, I, I was one of the few people that knew who he was. I knew exactly who he and his brother was. Anyway, long story short, um, it, 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 was dwar it was dwarfed by the next year um, by the Dallas conference in which um, Jimmy Kimmel and the, and the Late Show came in right. and, you know, he, he sent a team – which was even worse because that and that would became the end of Robbie Davidson's part of the conferences because right we so, so do you think at that point in time yeah the Dallas because Jimmy Kimmel obviously is not um is not for really anything of purity you know and no. flat earth is as pure as you can get you know yeah. what I mean but yeah. during that time do you think that that was the culmination of the end of the flat earth international conference i would think because it was that, that was going to be the last one that robbie was we already had a a committee that was being formed and they were going to take over robbie was never going to be was never going to do it again because they couldn't trust him and now he could he could claim that he was innocent so what jimmy kimmel did was he sent um a four man camera team and which 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 the, we we they told us he, they were coming, but what they didn't know was they hired another guy, one a, 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 a troll to pay full, you know, to pretend to be a flat earther. Came in with the gear, paid full price, and walked in and was, you know, went to my thing, you know, the beginning of the conference. But he was so outrageous that they threw him out within a couple hours. Right. And but but at that point, it's like okay, so you let this happen twice. And right. that was it. So the next conference, which was going to be 20, 2020, was supposed to be in Vegas. And, uh, it, it, well, then everything was locked down and we couldn't do it. Right. But, uh, but yeah, yeah, it was an interesting, weird. I mean, again, I'm not going to get too mad at the Jimmy Kimmel thing because they did a seven minute skit on us. Well, and, you, you know, know if, if, if you think about it, though, um, I think Logan Paul, that was that was almost like a death shot. But we were in a coma. At least the FBIC was in a coma. I think Jimmy Kimmel just uh, you un you unplugged the machine and it, was, it died at that point. Yeah, but, yeah. You yeah. Know, the FBI... um, let me ask you a question. Yeah, um, go ahead. The flat Earth community has been splintered as a result of these issues, unbeknownst to uh, lots of people, including yourself, because you left that conference in Denver. Yeah. However, you can understand why when people went in one direction. And the flat earth community was starting to call you and others shills and blah, blah, this, that, and the other. So yeah. it's understandable the whole reaction from the true community. Because everything is a conspiracy nowadays anyway. You know yeah. what I mean? But my question to you mm -hmm. is, you know, uh, the flat earth community in itself, after this happened, yeah. was this conference before the Netflix um hit piece or was it after? it was it was right it was during the netflix uh hit piece so Boy, that was like a 110 bam bam get the heck out of town thing. yeah it was, it was, it was uh, the, the, now you can understand why the flat earth community has been so against others you know i wrote a book called flat truth back in 2018 yeah and i wore two watches to mock nasa i had fa a fake shirt on yeah. You know, I was in front, sitting in front of my SLK, my Mercedes, and I was doing it to mock the astronauts. So I was accused of being a high-level Freemason and this. Sure. That, so I've got my own criticisms, you know what I mean? But uh, yeah. my first, uh, but the flat Earth community now is going to be splinted even more, and uh, you probably realize it anyway because the last night of that conference, I'm yeah. going to tell you what turned me off. It wasn't so much Logan Paul. This at the people that I really thought was the most likable was you and Rob Skeever. Of oh, everybody. 
Thank I you. I thought it was you and Rob Skiba. And well, I, well Rob, Rob, Rob Skiba was the nicest guy that ever was. I mean, yes. He was very, yes. Very and he's, nice. been, he's been on Ferret Radio a couple of times himself. Yeah. But, you know, what, you know, the more splintering part, and I was just involved in a documentary called Flatten the Curve. It's, sure. it's received over 5 million views uh, yep. worldwide. You were gracious and beautiful and nice enough to, to, to merit and put it on your show. And we oh, it's a, it's a good thing. I, I like it. I liked it a lot. And uh, so, but we, um, I guess, as far as documentaries go, and let's put all the bad crap in the past because we need unity in our movement because right. now what we're trying to attempt to do with Flatten the Curve is to evaporate science, science fiction, pseudoscience, whatever you may call it, yeah. evaporate it against versus scripture to right. evaporate the pseudoscience with the scripture and the true word of God and bring people to Jesus Christ. And that's what we're about. I hear you. I hear you. I mean, I, I can't tell you how many times I recommended uh, um, testing the globe.com, you know, and it, it was my default go to, you know, it's, it's out there all the time. I said to people all, all the time and uh, uh, Rob and, you know, God bless him. Uh, we'll, we'll miss him. But his his work will live on for a very very long time, and and you're absolutely right. You know, I, I, we I try to remind people. It's like, look, the reason why so many of the 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 mirrors of the flat Earth clues were called "They are hiding God with the greatest lie ever." They are hiding God with the biggest lie ever, is because at least half of the flat Earth community are strong Christians, and that is to to where again to where in Dallas we had two stages. And there were conferences that I was not even invited to, Flat Earth Christian conferences, because I wasn't Christian enough. Man, but, you, you don't even realize how important what you just said, what that means to me in my heart and us as a radio, you know, as, as a YouTube channel. Oh, cool. Because, you know, I can remember, and you remember this too. Now, your Flat Earth clues, I put that up against Eric DeBay's 200 proofs. That's oh, how yeah. strong... And how many times has it has been viewed? Then I'm gonna get to my point about how many times. I don't, I don't. I don't know because the the mirrors got more than the uh, the main channel. I know the the big three mirrors got four million, three million, and three million, seven and ten plus whatever I in mind. So, I mean, in the in over ten million for the Flat Earth Clues, I think. But wow. uh, I mean, not on my channel. That's how I, that's. A lot of people don't know that most of the hits for the Flat Earth Clues wasn't even from my channel because uh, I made my the, the clues free to everyone. I made them Creative Commons license, mm -hmm. and people took them. And because they didn't put Flat Earth in the title, I didn't even know they were there. And so right. people were contacting me saying, "Oh, wow, I loved your movie." And I go, "Yeah, it's great. It wasn't really a movie, but whatever." And then I heard that enough times. It's like, "What exactly are you watching? Can you send me the link to whatever it is?" And then I'd find these links. And it's like. You know, the complete, like under the dome, full documentary, and it's just a flat Earth clues. I'm going, right? And you watch this? Why? Because oh, because watch it because we watched the Stephen King series under the dome, and it's like, wow. I mean, some people wow. made made quite a bit of uh, you know some change off of those because you know they can monetize them for themselves. It was like great, good for them. Right. Uh, so yeah, a lot a lot of hits off those things. Wow, and you know, part and part of the reason um, that I asked you that is because. Uh, a few years back, I remember you wrote a piece. I think I don't know if you were on your own podcast or you were somewhere, but you actually wrote something about uh, thinking that the Earth and the so-called universe was part of a uh, like a computer simulation. Sure. And I want you to kind of expound on that. And obviously, this was from a few years ago, so I'm guessing that you've evolved we all evolve in each day at least right. most of us are trying to do right. you feel the same please explain that uh because i didn't really see it i just heard it from oh uh, no 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 worries PSA. i came from uh i mean yeah i was born into an e uh, evangelical christian home and i you know born again and s s church wasn't just a sunday thing i went to youth group and vacation bible school and camp malibu and all the fun stuff but i fell away from that when i got into tech and i was a video game producer for a, a number of years um, and then taught proprietary software for 20 years and the tech world and the biblical world don't necessarily line up with each other 
And so when I, I, and, and I was always a big believer because again, I come from the video game world in the whole concept of virtual reality. And then when I, then I, what I really was doing was kind of blending the two and not in an evil sinister way. I was basically saying that, look, God is a programmer. You know, God does things at a, at a high, high level. I mean, and if people say, well, you can't call it code. I'm going, well, it's God code. But that's really what I was saying, because if we are in, uh, if, if the world is flat and it's enclosed, you know, if we're in something, something that has walls and a floor and a ceiling, then it's probably virtual. But we had nothing to do with the building of it. That was built by, a, you know, a, a much, much, much higher power. Right. So, <clears throat> and and what I heard from other people, including Rob Skiba, was that when the the, the flat Earth, the, the whole flat Earth concept came out, it became it drew a lot more people back to the church, way more than it just about anything else. Because again, if it was built, then it was created, hence the creator, right. and then you know it goes on from there. So, yeah, I mean, I, I still do believe in the virtual, again, again, you know, the technology we're talking on right now, it, it lends itself to the virtual world, but I don't believe that we have any part of it whatsoever. I just, you know, I, it sounds too simple to say that God is a programmer, but why not? I mean, it's, just, you know, God is, is only as complex as we allow him to be. Meaning when, when thousands of years ago, when there were no computers, like, well, God, manufactured the world with force of will and a magic chisel and t-square and, and stuff and now you know we we look at it a little more advanced because we're striving to do you know to replicate some of the aspects that have been used in this world that kind of help kind of that very much so and uh okay. you, you know uh i had a question from uh, rob talking about of course uh rob Ske the, rob taylor right and about the firmament and you know yep. when we were talking about rob rob skiver he's taught a lot of us about the rakia the, uh, the firmament mm -hmm. above us and uh yep and um you know opera, the uh antarctica voyages by uh you know richard e bird you know operation mm -hmm. high jump operation deep freeze nasa was founded in 1958 they annex antarctica then they guard the firmament once they annex it and right. they nuke the firmament with the Operation Dominic and Fishbowl and everything. And of course, yes. the, the moon hoax that would, you know, as far as uh, trying to prove that there is no firmament. And what, what, what my belief is, what's going on now, I think we're on a, um, a really speeding train gone through the blueprint of the book of revelations and it's almost like the luciferians want the antichrist they want to take on god the creator sure it, it's almost like uh they believe that you your own god the upper freemasons that you know they essentially are atheists that they can live forever you know so goes the story that the luciferians have always that agenda ruled the world they tempted jesus three times you know what i mean yeah. my belief i think shrinking pseudoscience bringing people to the word of god in jesus christ to me is the number one that's so much more important to people like me mm -hmm. than flat earth well oh, uh, flat earth is the creation but sure. just recognizing the creator and that god came back in the flesh as yeah. jesus christ and i think that's and the, the the thing I guess the only thing I wanted to say negative towards the Denver conference was mm -hmm. last night we were there we were in a bar and I can hear unmentionable people but they were big in the flat Earth community mm -hmm. you know obviously it wasn't you you were gone buddy you went back to Minnesota but yeah. uh, they made sure that we heard it say oh yeah the conference was great until those Jesus Christ people showed up that kind of was with me. Just personally, well, I'm not interested in going anymore. You know what I mean? I just, right. it kind of was, kind of was like, you know, they, then they had the name, uh, uh, the, the 25 different names for Jesus Christ and this, that, and the other. Don't eat pork. You know, anything to divide us, the community, to me, that's got to be a foregone conclusion that we all made errors. You know, I have, you have, we all have. But I think the biggest thing is a unifying sword that in numbers, we are a lot more powerful than, than we are as opposed to not being in numbers. Right. And I think that the, the vision that, that we experienced last year is 
that needs to go away. I think what is a theme for you that would help unite all of us, including this interview? Just um, I think for the most part, what what helped us unite, believe it or not, was the the two years of of lockdown. In that we didn't do a lot of conferences, but we remain generating a lot of content online. Um, the meetups have started to pick up recently, but <clears throat> we devised a lot. I mean, like, you know, I don't want to sh sell it short, but the, uh, the app, which was so wonderful. I mean, yeah, the, 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 the documentary you guys made the next level, which just came out, the app has done amazingly well, uh, especially since they put in the, the friend finder and I have talked to a bunch of people that is like, Oh yeah, I looked up on the friend finder and, and I found a whole bunch of people in my area and I went to a restaurant and, and met them. Uh, people forget that one of the big powers of the flat earth community is that 90% of our people are in the closet because of friends and families and coworkers, you know, you don't want to, yeah, there's people that wear hats and t-shirts and stuff like that, but not a lot, not, not, not a lot. And when you run into them, they, it, it's, it's great um, uh, reinforcement, which is, which is so wonderful. Um, but, but you know what, Mark, on yeah. that point that you made, I yeah. have like shirts, we always wear our gear from, from time to time. I don't do it every day, but I have a NASA shirt on that says liars on it. It right. said at NASA, I could walk, I was at the Strawberry Festival, which was attended by thousands. People don't even realize it. And unless you see someone you know, right. they're talking to you and say, hey, man, you like my shirt? Liars on it. And, oh, man, I, didn't, I just thought it was a NASA shirt. People are so preoccupied with consumerism, materialism. Yep. They, they are. They are so indoctrinated into their own uh, delusion, I guess. Yeah. And they're just not paying attention, you know? And uh, so you almost have to point it out to them. So, you know, unless you're walking down the street naked, you know what I mean, with uh, fl the earth is flat, you know what I mean? People <laughs> yeah. are going to really recognize uh, your, your clothing apparel. So social media has still, even though we're not recommended nearly as much as we used to be on, on YouTube, because we, you know, we saturated it for three years and then they had to do a, a, a Senate hearing on us, which is flattering in its own. Uh, but it, people forget that when you go in you, uh, to, to YouTube, for example, and you type in flat earth, every major channel, and I'm not, that's not an exaggeration. If you can think of a big channel with the exception of like music channels and crap like that has done a flat earth story because right. the word got out. I mean, heck we had them, the, the first book by uh, uh, Kelly Weil, the, the first anti flat earth book that came out mainstream, you know, you can, you can go out and, and, and pick it up. It's called um, uh, over the edge. And we, everybody started doing these channels, you know, everyone started addressing the story and we got out there because the, the word, the whispers around there was, if you do a flat earth video, even if you hate it, you will get more hits and the comment sections will just blow up because people are so polarized. Right. Uh, and the old, you know, the, the old saying, you know, even bad publicity is good publicity, but I like the other one, which is even bad publicity is free. And we, we got so many millions of hits. I mean, look, you know, look up, type in Flat Earth and YouTube and sort by uh, uh, views. And the top one is Shane Dawson, of all people, right. where he got pushing 40 million hits on this thing. And it actually was, was pretty fair. You know, he, it was not bad at all because his brother is into, in, into the truth community. And I got a chance to meet him down in Los Angeles. And it was, it was awesome. Well, you know, um, what is the reason why... People like the Bay is uh, when you go to, uh, you almost have to go to his video and type in the name Eric the Bay. Yeah. This type of video, they put him on page 69. They'll just put uh, Dan a science man debunking the Bay. Oh. What is it? So obviously, they don't want to know, they don't want anybody to know about Flat Earth, you know? And well, speaking of that, what brought you to Flat Earth? Please tell us what happened in Mark Sargent's life that actually brought you. Oh, flat earth. I was people. different. I was, I wasn't like other people. I was, cause I, I never got married or had kids. And so it was, I had a lot of free time on my hands, huge amounts of free time. If you never get married, you had so much free time. Right. And, and I looked at just about every conspiracy there was, and that's not, that's no lie. I, I looked at, I had an opinion on just about every conspiracy you could think of. Some I liked, some I didn't like, and there was only one or two left that I had not looked at. And one of them was flat earth. And I thought, Oh, right. okay. I'll just check that off my list and, and search it. And so, yeah, in 2014, when I was looking into it, just on a lark, 
uh, you know, I never thought it would go anywhere. It's like, oh, I'll just chew on this for a weekend and then you know I'll be done with it. it. There won't be anything left. And the more I looked, the the worse it got. But what what got what what really caught my eye in the beginning was uh, when the first flat Earth video I clicked on, I had this visceral reaction. But I, I actually physically got flushed, embarrassed, and I was I was at home alone, you know, with the drapes pulled. Right? What video was that? Was that Dubai? Or what, no, no, I didn't even know who Eric was until uh, 2015. I didn't know right. because Matt Matt Boylan told me who Eric was. You know, he was right. he was saying you what what happened was I had done a few I did an interview was almost immediately. You know, for whatever reason, people started calling me saying it's like, oh yeah, let's talk about this. And by the third interview someone from eric i have eric and i have never spoken officially i think he snuck into a podcast once and pretended to be a, anonymous but he and i have not officially talked right and he had some of his people get a hold of me and they were saying well eric's not very happy with the way you're doing interviews and i'm going the who now what, what, what are you talking about and and they said okay you can't use you can't use um crow triple sevens you can't reference him anymore when it comes to the moon you can't do this and you can't do that and i'm going who are you guys why are you telling me to do stuff right and it's like right. and, well we represent eric dubay i'm going and is this supposed to mean something to me and then right. matt, matt boylan did the same thing i've still got the email from 2015 and, and speaking of matt boylan let's yeah. let's uh i just wanted to interrupt you on that one uh yeah, yeah. That's, matt, that's matt powerland yep matt I powerland. Actually, um in june of 2018 yeah. I flew to Las Vegas and gave him a bunch of copies, a couple copies of my book. No. And that was the unfinished version, actually. That's a lot, that's another story for another time. But mm -hmm. they my publisher had to republish my book. It was only part of my book. Okay. So I brought him a couple copies and uh spent a day and a half with with Matt Powerland and his wife. And yep. uh we had a barbecue and went to the old strip in Las Vegas. So I think Fremont Street, whatever, but okay. We uh we spent the time, so I spent probably about fifteen hours with him, and uh, he was uh ex Hollywood. He was involved in the Hollywood yep. industry, and uh, yep. he uh of course he at the time when I went and saw him, it was almost like there was a war going on between all of you guys, in particular he and uh Eric Debeck. Yep. Now who's 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 the flat Earth God? Is it who me? Who's the flat Earth God? Yeah. You know and. Of course, everybody, uh, God uses everybody as just tools, uh, which is vessels to uh, to uh, propagate the truth to everybody. Right. But anyway, that, that's just wanted to interrupt because I know Matt. Oh, no, no, no. no is, uh, I think somewhere in Belize or Central America, he got out of Dodge, by the way. Wouldn't surprise me. His ultimate goal was to set up a compound somewhere in some tropical island and go off grid. He basically, he was his story is so weird. He, you know, he's from the entertainment community, actually very, very smart guy. And he, a hell of a painter, hell of a painter and actually not a bad comedian. Right. And whether or not you believe his, his NASA story where, you know, that he, that he knew NASA guys and they kind of told him what was going on. He didn't get it for years. And then right. it's like, all of a sudden the light bulb clicks on. It's like, wait a minute, right. those guys were saying something. And by the time he figured it out, they were long gone, but he still all of that information rattling around his head. And right. Seen, it's sort of like Cindy Holland, you know, Cindy, same way she was at when she worked at NASA, she they were at a party and right. she heard the people across the hall talk about everybody still believing that we landed on the moon and they were cracking laughing about it. Yeah. And they were a little bit inebriated, you know what I mean? They sure, had, which they was crossed up a little bit. And I yeah. guess when you saw us up a little bit, sometimes the truth spills out and oh, you don't care. When, when it when it comes down to candles and wine, the truth usually will come out. And, you exactly. know, if you're that sort of party, well, that's good. that's when it comes out because you got nothing better to do. It's like, hey, I, I want to take this opportunity, Mark, to uh, say hi to uh, Rochelle Everson. In fact, she uh, met Rochelle. She gave me this cup. Oh, cool. With a great beard comes great responsibility. Nice. And some nice. of our loyal yeah. listeners, you know, Fisherman in the Box, uh, Rob Taylor. Rob Rob was in the movie. He's a U.S ex us army helicopter pilot and yep. uh just want to say hello to you guys and thank you for joining us and my special guest uh mark sergeant guys you're listening to hoodwinked into the age of insanity i'm your host mark 
Flatland or Hollander, whatever you want to call me. <laughs> I'll be him today. And happy Mother's Day to all you moms. Happy out Mother's there. Day to everybody. I have um, a special guest, Mark Sargent. Go ahead, Mark. Oh, no, no, it's cool. Your point. What the, Matt's video, I will say this, you know, he was in the right place at the right time in that he, when he was living in Montreal, Canada, because he's Canadian originally, right. his girlfriend at the time sat him down, uh, probably after hearing the story a million times, and she sat him down sober first thing in the morning, because he was not sober a lot, and sat him down on the couch and basically turned on the camera and said, tell the story. And it was just him on the couch as lucid as he could be, because honestly, if he was lucid and if he wasn't getting all twitchy, he's actually really, really great. When he right. starts drinking or starts getting a little paranoid, oh, good Lord, he cannot give a good interview to save his life. And we all, and we all do, Mark, because, you know, if I drink vodka, I got I have to swear off of vodka. <laughs> I can't, I'm not yeah. a, a hard liquor drinker. I could drink a beer or two and that's it. Oh, yeah. Because vodka's really made, hurt my family. It, as as a, as a result of my actions from the past. And by the way, guys, I quit smoking cigarettes too. Good for you. And, uh, so I, I'm chewing those little nicotine pouches, you know, but I quit smoking a couple of weeks back. The, yeah. um, the, the Matt Boylan story, I believe was partially, mostly true, but I don't think he ever was getting a paycheck from NASA. What we tend to do when it comes to stories like that is we remove degrees of separation one thing is absolutely has never changed, and he is a hell of a painter, hell of a right. painter. And so what I right. think happened was he ran into some NASA guys that one of them owned a place out in the Hamptons, and I think Matt was hired by this guy to paint something, a room, a, you know, a, a wall, whatever it was. And, Matt, you know, Matt's not a fast painter. So right. he's, he's painting, he's painting, and the next thing you know, this guy wants to throw a party out there. It's like, hey, Matt. You know what? Why don't you show up? You're an interesting, young, good looking guy. All sorts of creativity. You're way better than these pencil pushers. So Matt shows up. He's the pretty boy drinking wine. He has no idea what's going on. The power goes out. And then the story happens. The story, right. which is um, uh, a couple of the guys, and it's been a while since I've told this one, but I actually tell it better than Matt does, <laughs> where what happened was that, you know, different departments of NASA, different government people were there and they were saying, yeah, I heard a rumor, Frank, that, uh, you know, out certain, you know, a certain boundary at the Antarctic uh, GPS doesn't work anymore. It's like, yeah, Fred, you should send a team out there to, to confirm that. And then another guy comes in, a super serious X-Files type of guy walks up and he goes, well, if Ted sends them out that far, they're not coming back. And, 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 and Matt, Matt just happens, you know, just like, why wouldn't they be coming back? It's like too cold or something, right? He goes, no. He goes, no, because it's flat and GPS doesn't work out there, right? Right. And and Matt's still not getting it. Like any like anyone, when you bring up the whole flat earth to somebody, they don't understand what you're talking about, right? And so he takes a piece of chalk and he clears, you know, the floor because it's a stone, one of those stone floors, you know, rich people. And he starts drawing the world on the floor and he's explaining things like energy transfer and thermal dynamics and how sure. the world works sure. and by the time he's done and again it's such a great movie scene you know if you pulled back the camera he matt says at the end he goes he goes i was looking at the, basically the un flag on the right, floor exactly and six continents not seven There's yeah, only yeah. six and <laughs> matt and again and then you cut forward flash forward and matt doesn't get it he doesn't get what he's seen it's like yeah that's really interesting but like a lot of people you know you put you try to put the seed in their head but it takes the mind a little while to absorb it sure and then all of a sudden he's like wait a minute that was like a you know kind of like the people that watch the documentary I give, here's a perfect comparison when the the netflix documentary when it came out because i sat in studio audiences in different parts of the country and watched people watch they were watching the movie first 20 right. 30 minutes of the movie they did not think it was real at all they they thought it was a piece of like they thought it was a piece of docufiction. And then all right. of a sudden there was so much information on screen, they're going, wait a minute. This is real. There's something scary and huge on the internet, and there's people talking about it, and I have no idea how where that, you know, like again, they'd never seen this before in their lives. Or the the famous Los Angeles editor story, which some of you already know, which is they showed this movie, the the Netflix documentary, to an LA editor with no context. They said, Don't uh, you, we're not going to tell you anything about it. And when he was done watching it, they, he goes, he goes, wow. He goes, the budget for this movie. He goes, how would you even get it? This is an independent film. 
right? And and they go, what are you talking about? He goes, he goes, all those actors, they played it so straight. Not a single one cracked out of character, right? right. And and he, and they're like, no man, there were no actors. That was that actually happened. And he goes, that conference down in North Carolina, that actually was a real thing. He's like, yeah, man. And he just blew it. Just blew his mind. Which is why there were so many news media. A lot of people don't know that they will send recon teams. Usually, a, a one guy, they'll send out to 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 whatever story that's out there. And there are these recon guys from different networks that right. were um, that were there that first day of the conference. And once they realized, once the lobby filled up, and it was like, "Yep, this is actually happening." Once that happened, they were everyone was on their phones, and they overnighted people. People flew all night from different countries. Defluence by the second day, there was this. I, I, we lost count of the amount of cameras. Wow. So, anyway, you, the Matt um, thing, do, do I believe the Matt thing was real? Yes, I do. I, I, I really, really do because it's too good a story not to be. Right. It, it's, it's a great, it's a, it's a great short X file story. I, I love it. So, sure, sure. Um, it's, you know, as far as, um, you know, Matt, and, uh, I wanted to ask you because Matt allegedly, you know, when when I saw him, when I I haven't spoken to Matt in a couple of years, but yeah. he actually uh, used to tell me that he would get death threats on his life. And uh, I've had one death threat through a phone call back in 2018, right before my book was coming out, yeah. uh, you know, a couple of days beforehand. And uh, have you received any threats? No, which really doesn't help my credibility at all. If I was smart, I'd actually make up some death threats, but I think people could sniff that out pretty quick. Right, um, right. I, but, but I don't receive any threats because I wasn't in the same place. Like Matt, in his case, he was actually at a party. And the thing that, that Matt never did, and he could have at any point, is he never named names. Right. And he could have, but you, there, was a, there was a real fear in his eyes, kind of like if he actually set out names that he might put himself in danger. Um, well, yeah. with, with me, I've never, I, look, I just talked about Flat Earth, but at the same time, I was in the same position, like, let's just say Joe Rogan. That's a great example, which is Joe's got, you know, wife, second wife, with kids, the whole nine yards. And uh, I remember that um, uh, Alex Jones, during when during uh, one of his low points, he actually told people that they that they got to Joe, you know, that they 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 basically offered him the carrot and the stick. And they said, look, you, you got to take one or the other or, or you know, we're, we're going to. Well, yeah, exa- you know, Mark, he actually a few years ago, he was coming out big time talking that the moon landings were a hoax was a oh, hoax. Yeah. A hoax. Oh, by yeah. the way, uh, I think we probably did go to the moon, and and of course, Spotify is paying him a hundred million dollars for four years. Yeah, to, uh, how do you? Uh, yeah, the, the I wrote about that in the book where Joe Rogan, he's not exactly an enemy of the state, but he was in the wrong. He took the money, which is great, good for him. Uh, but he, but in doing so, he could never talk seriously about flat Earth whatsoever. So when he was going against NASA people and just destroying them, because all things being equal, um, wh- whoever has the most conviction usually wins. In his case, they he just went dark for like an entire year. And when he comes out, he had a brand new show, a one-year contract on the Sci- Science Channel called uh, Joe Rogan Questions Everything. I don't think it was sci-fi. I think it was science. Could have been, I, you have to forgive me, one or the other. And the very first episode, he basically recanted and apologized for any bad thing he ever said about NASA. It's like, wow, okay. And then that didn't do very well. You know, it, it, the, the show didn't go very well. And then he, he then he's now the number one podcast in the world. How, how does that happen? I mean, look, you, yeah, he's been you know, in the it's, it's quite interesting that you say that because uh, he averages about 11 million views each day. And somebody like uh, Tucker Carlson on Fox, right? Who in uh, Sean Hannity together only average about 5 million a right. day and he's averaging 11 million and then we got these guys you know the mainstream of course the beginning of knowledge as you know is unplug the idiot box you know and you be begin to acquire a little bit of knowledge but but the mainstream followers including people that I work with they never heard of Joe Rogan but they they know who Sean Hannity is or Joe you know, yeah Joe always had Paulson. 
Yeah, Joe always had work. I mean, you know, he was in uh, news radio in his younger days, and he did stand-up comedy, but he wasn't huge. And, you know, he did um, uh, The Man Show and, you know, a couple other things and, and like, you know, game show type extreme sport game shows. And then he got into the whole UFC fighting commentator. He's always been around, but I would never consider him huge. But when you, again, power perceived is power achieved. When you keep coming out and saying, oh, the biggest podcast in the world is Joe Rogan, you're going to get people that are out there. But then again, with social media, now you can pad the numbers with anything you want. And I highly recommend anyone that's listening uh, to watch the, uh, the wonderful documentary on that called Fake Famous, which right. is just brilliant in that uh, the, the line, of, I'll, I'll give you the summary really quick which is the, the, the opening one, the opening premises on Instagram, which I'm too old to, to know anything about Instagram. But on Instagram, there are millions of people with at least 100,000 followers or more. How is that possible? There's less than 10,000 famous people in the world at any given one time. So how are there millions of famous people on Instagram? Well, they're not. They're all fake. They just, right. buy, you know, in-game currency is turned into this new thing. So can you pad the, the numbers when you're Joe Rogan? Of course you can. And you'd want to, uh, you know, because you they have the marketing guys is like, oh, yeah, I mean, he might have four million, five million. Let's let's crank it up. Let's let's give him the most. I mean, the 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 sorry, not to go off on another tangent. The most famous example in the world would be um, PewDiePie, <clears throat> you know, a guy from um, Switzerland, just right. a troll who has currently at the moment, I think, 100 million followers on right. YouTube, which is absolutely completely fraudulent. I mean, the 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 next big enter. He has more than Katy Perry and Taylor Swift combined, and he's not. He hasn't done anything, and even he even fooled American producers at one point to where they gave him a television show on Fox for one season, and it just completely crashed. And and the producers like, why isn't anybody watching the show? Because there's nobody there, right? <laughs> they're just fake. They're phantoms. It's like you. They're numbers on a screen. Those numbers will not watch a television show anyway. Sorry, another rant. Uh, hey, hey, Mark. You um. By the way, guys, I want to um to um to pay homage also to rts that is real true seekers dot com and mark i encourage you to uh to join rts they're, they're really great the platform i think you'd be amazed at oh, okay. and uh they their algorithms everything that they're building for us it's almost like a it's just an uncensored channel all right I mean, not like this show you we get in hundreds and uh, several hundred views getting discarded all the time, True. you know, on this very, this small little channel that we have. And I can imagine it's happening on your channel as well. You oh, know, but, my, it's, my. Uh, but it's uh, completely uncensored, but it's real dash truth dash seekers.com. Now, Eric DeBay is part of it, Jaron from Jaronism. Lots of a uh, truth. In fact, Tucker Carlson's part of it as well. So really, I do highly encourage you to check out RTS. Cool. Yeah, yeah. My my channel. I I don't run anything outside of YouTube. I don't even manage myself. Uh, other people are generous enough to do it for me. Um, but on YouTube, my channel should have been burned down so many times. Uh, mostly because you know over the last two years with the whole, you know, virus of unknown origin. <laughs> uh, we, uh, yeah. you know, I was ranting against that for so long and I got 11 guideline strikes in 72 hours and I should have been dead, dead in the water. So somebody, and that doesn't help my credibility either because everybody knows it. And right. so it was like, all right, somebody, some puppet master up there is being awfully nice with me. Don't know why, right. which they would, which, you know, I, I have never received a briefcase of money from them so but at the same time i suppose i should be grateful because i've never seen any black sedans follow me either well you know i wanted to give a, a shout out to eddie allen car you know he's got the uh J japan brazil usa the, right uh, the flat earth banjo right and he had two strikes against him within a couple of weeks and it's almost like he it's forcing people to walk on eggshells and you know oh, yeah. i told eddie i said eddie don't worry about it just make sure you don't talk about the magic potion the right. Big C word, and you're right. gonna be fine. Make sure that you go through all of your material before you put it out there. But it's uh, but it does. It creates a situation where people walk on eggshells. And by the and that's communist to 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 the point. There's no freedom of speech, freedom of expression. Uh, and if it, but believe me, what we talked about the big C. You know, if it's real science, is always going to be able to be questioned. You know, right. it's real science. Right, if, right, right. If you cannot question the science, and it's not science, it's propaganda. Right. 
but we can't talk about the big propaganda and we won't do that but yeah. uh but man you final thoughts uh if somebody needs to get in touch with mr mark Sargent, mark yeah. take the floor uh easiest way to get a hold of me i'll make it easy for everybody just type in flat earth mark into whatever browser you want. I don't care if it's Google, I don't care if it's YouTube, I don't care if it's whatever platform you like. Flat Earth Mark will get you to whatever's out there. I have a few books on Amazon, the documentaries floating around there somewhere. Uh, there's videos everywhere you can find them, but that's the easiest way to find me. Uh, in every video that I make, at least on YouTube, my email address, my home address, my, um, my social security number, my bank account numbers, all that stuff's on there. Uh, feel free to steal it whenever, uh, but yeah, it, 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 it's out there. All no, that's that's what that's what I did in the beginning. It was one people say, you know, how did it happen? People say, why do you get interviewed? What other people do don't, and I go because they put my contact information out there. Right, and it's something they you, they do not recommend anyone to do, especially women. Don't still don't do it on the internet. Don't put your contact information out there. But for me, I wanted people to get a hold of me. It's like, look, I think the Earth is flat. Tell me where I went wrong. Somebody call me. <laughs> and that's and so yeah i've continued that i have my my phone number and and how to get a hold of me is out there and and that's all i do so people ring me up like you and you and you know mark you've been a very gracious get very very one of the most kind people out there i think you've yeah. always been a com you know you accommodated us always and I, and I called you at the 11th hour and please forgive me for that because oh, no, i, tr no, I no. tried to no. give uh I, I was call, calling Dave Walsh, uh, Dave Marsh in England with uh, Ron Hadbird and with their moonshots and everything. And uh, Dave's birthday was yesterday. You know, Dave Marsh. And yep. today he's got his son. I said, man, we got to redirect our thoughts on this. And uh, but you've been you've been very, very uh, accommodating. But we Happy really, to do it. really enjoyed your time here and your and your contribution to uh, the truth movement. Thank you. And, uh, you know, I, I think, again, you know, you came from a, a Christian family, a, a Jesus, God loving people. And I think a lot of people had those questions. And I think it is time for unity with all of us. And uh, it's great to see that you are a true disciple of Jesus Christ. And I think well, that to me that that kind of gave you an A plus on the interview. I was really pleased with your answer. And, you know, I was going to try to as much as I can, I'm, I try to keep it you know, pro bono as far as just trying to on a professional level and all. I've always thought that, you know, of the people that I met personally in my life, that you and Rob Skiba were the ones that, you know what, such a nice guy and he's so accommodating. And, and you know, we really deeply appreciate that. And uh, But from uh, um, final thoughts, where do we go from here? Uh, where we go from here, obviously, uh, anyone that's listening to this on my channel, you should go sub where, where am I going to have them sub to your channel? Ferret radio live ferret radio live. Perfect. Um, as far as we go to, from here, uh, there's going to be a big conference pr provided, um, WrestleMania three doesn't interrupt us between now and then with the whole Russia thing. I call it WrestleMania B three to be kind of cute. Right. Um, the, uh, there, we have a conference down in the Carolinas in October. And we still have local meetups that are happening all over the place. And if the international borders free up, you know what? I may even consider traveling again if we get that far. We right. will have to see because, as you know, all bets are off when it comes to the world and what we're running into right now. So everybody just stay safe and keep your head on a swivel. Right. And I, t I tell you what, <coughs> two most important days of yours, your life, my life, all of our lives is the day that you were born in the day that you find out the reason why, mm -hmm. you know, those are the two most important days of your life. And, uh, but guys, uh, Mark Sergeant, if we asked you to come back, would you, uh, be as accommodating as you always are? Of course. You just name it and I'll come back. Oh, thank you, brother. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this is Mark Hollander. Special guest, the architect of flat earth clues been viewed over 10 million times as the only one and only Mark Sargent. Thank you so much for coming on. Thank you guys for listening. I am your host, Mark Hollander. Thank you. God bless and keep you. Good night.